Uh, Y'all recognize this nigga? Y'all already see that I started off my fuck shit, but anyways, let's get right into the shits, cause there was some things that happened this week. The so Grammys came on this weekend, uh, on Sunday, and did anybody watch? I mean, cause I, I know I didn't, so. <laughs> I didn't watch it, but I kept up with everything that was going on, you know, via Twitter. Uh, Cardi B performed. Um, Alicia Keys was the host. Um, LMA won a Grammy. Cardi B won a Grammy. I'll talk about that later. And Drake, he won a Grammy, and during his speech, they cut this man off. Look, the point is, you've already won if you have people who are singing your songs word for word, if you're a hero in your hometown. If look, look, if there's people who have regular jobs who are coming out in the rain, in the snow, spending their hard-earned money to buy tickets to come to your shows, you don't need this right here, I promise you, you already won. But <laughs> I mean, ah, Cardi B won a Grammy for best rap album. To be quite honest, I feel like it was well deserved because we kept up our watch her go from stripper to IG famous <laughs> to love of hip hop to putting out a mixtape and another mixtape all that yellow hit and then uh, her album drops. We kept up with all that and we seen her like gradually rise to the top. Here's another thing though. It was against some real good albums like Victory Lap by Nipsey Hussle, that was a good album. Swimming by Mac Miller was a good album. Astro World was a good album. It won, so that's that that says a lot. It was a lot of scuttlebutt about her winning the Grammy. People were saying that it was fucked up how she won when they bought out Mac Miller's parents, but that that is pretty fucked up. Why fight him out if I know that he's not gonna win the Grammy? But she shared her moment via IG. <laughs> she shared her moment with him. You know what I'm saying? She said that this is our Grammy. We won. And you know what I'm saying? Like, that's some humble shit. Because a lot of people, they just want to be like, let, let this Grammy go home. But she actually acknowledged that. So I respect that. I respect that she won the Grammy. I don't really see why everybody hating this shit. Like, come on, man. She, she, she put in work. She put in work. Like, you, you can't deny that. And a lot of the hate that I'm seeing is from niggas. Like, bro, why are we hating on females' success? Let her have her moment. Let her appreciate her moment. Don't bring anybody else into that moment. That's it. It's her. And she wanted to share her moment with Mac Miller. So that's what all it should be. That's the only name who should be bought up besides hers in this moment right here. That's it. And before the Grammys, the Rock Nation brunch happened. But I wasn't there. So, you know, it's cool. It's cool because... Next year, Mark Anthony Davis Jr. will be at the 2020 Rock Nation Brunch. I don't know who gonna come across this video, who gonna watch it, who gonna come across my page. I don't know who's gonna come across this. But all I know is, Mark, me, me, I will be at the 2020 Rock Nation Brunch. That's it. I don't give a fuck if I gotta be outside that bitch. If y'all need photographers in there, I'm, I, I'm the guy. If y'all need videographers in there, I'm the guy. Like, come on, bro. Like, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. All I know is Mark will be in attendance at the 2020 Rock Nation Brunch. I'm just throwing it out there. Period. That's it. But at the Rock Nation Brunch, uh, Kevin Hart posted up a video of him, Jay, Meek, Usher, Casanova, and just a whole bunch of, you know, other people who are out here winning. And uh, the video was very motivational for me. <laughs> it was very motivational for me because it's like, yo, like you got like a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of men, black men who are winning in the circle. You know what I'm saying? Uplifted and motivated. Uplifted and motivated and supporting one another, and that's really some real shit. You don't really see a lot of that nowadays because there's so many people out here who's got that crab in the barrel mentality, so they don't really want to necessarily see each other win because they don't want to want that person to win before them. But like that right there, that's I, I respect shit like that when I see it. So yeah, that's the kind of circle that every I feel like a lot of people, especially if you're trying to make it somewhere, that's the kind of circle that you need to be in. Just have a circle of creative friends. Want to uplift 
one another and motivate each other to do better. And that's it. It shouldn't be no competition. Like, <laughs> that's it. Did y'all see Beyonce uh, avoiding the, uh, the blogger, the blogger dude, uh, Jason Lee? Oh. See, look, that's some introvert shit. If the true introvert will watch that video and feel it. Because that's me on the regular. That's me trying to avoid people. That's me trying to avoid my responsibilities. That's me trying to avoid these fucking essays that I do. Another thing that's been happening this week, uh, Gucci, the brand. Not Gucci Mane, the brand. Uh, they dropped a sweatshirt on their web on their website and long story short it was a blackface sweatshirt it was a sweatshirt that had blackface on it all black history went like come on like what the f i don't know who thought this was okay i don't know who gave this stuff the the, the 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 okay i don't know who was like you know what this is it this is what we're gonna do we'll put it out on black history month though like it, it wasn't right anyway but like especially now it was that wasn't even the right time it was, Come on, bro. Are we really surprised here? Are we really surprised? Like, a lot of these designers, these upscale designers, are very, 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 very racist. They don't be making clothes for y'all black asses. They don't make clothes for us. So yeah, pretty much we, the black community, are boycotting Gucci due to that. And T.I. is pushing this hard. Like, he's really pushing this shit hard. You have people who are, you know, for the boycott. You know what I'm saying? They're for the boycott. They're not entertaining, buying, or any of that shit. Then you have people like Mayweather <laughs> who says shit like, so I'm wearing what the fuck I want to wear. I'm about to go in the Gucci. Whatever, man. Like, we can't really tell another mother what we do with his money. So, that's it. But that didn't surprise me either because it's a whole lot of us who really don't give a fuck. So, yeah. Like the whole thing with H&M. <laughs> like the whole thing with H&M, bro. They put out that shit with the boy wearing that hoodie that's saying, I'm the coolest monkey of the jungle. We did that, we seen that shit, and we boycotted H&M. But how many of us went into H&M afterwards? How many of us bought some shit in H&M? Lesson learned, bro. Start supporting black designers. Start supporting them. That's it. That's all you do. I cannot stress this enough. Because we keep putting money in these racist motherfuckers' pockets. Don't give a fuck about us. NBA Youngboy was arrested. <laughs> and let me read y'all the article. Because this is some shit. <laughs> a rapper NBA Youngboy was arrested after getting into an altercation at an Atlanta hotel. At around 12 p.m. one Monday, a housekeeper at the Hyatt House on Marietta Street began knocking on Youngboy's hotel room door. After knocking several times, the housekeeper entered the room, which was supposed to be empty, so she could clean. Inside, the housekeeper found the room occupied by a young boy whose real name is Contrero Golden and a woman identified as Star Thickton. Why last name is Thickton? Whatever. Uh, according to police, young boy instructed Thickton to remove the housekeeper from the room. That's when Thickton started to assault the housekeeper by hitting her in the face. The fight continued into the hallway, but eventually the hotel employee took off to get help. Both Thickton and young boy were arrested. NBA young boy was charged with disorderly conduct, use of fighting words, physical obstruction of another, and possession of marijuana, less than an ounce. And, thick, and the girl was charged with the same thing, pretty much. And young boy is currently held at City of Atlanta in jail and expected to appear in court on Tuesday, which was yesterday. So I, I ain't really hear no updates about that. But goddamn, man, the lady was trying to do her fucking job. Like, what the f Whatever, man. Whatever. <laughs> 21 Savage was released from prison after being arrested by ICE. Um, and he got off of his private jet back in the States. <laughs> come on, man. I, I, come on. Like, I, 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 I knew that he was going to get released. And I was really hoping that they wasn't going to make, like, an example out of him and be, like, harsh on the punishment. Because they do that with a lot of rappers. Like, they... Make the punishment more harsh and all that shit, bro. Like, so I, I'm glad that he was the lead. Well, leading up to that, before that happened, um, Sean Carter, aka Jay Z, aka Jigga, aka my godfather, uh, he hired a legal team to uh, 
pretty much helped 21 Savage fight through this whole shit. And, and that's really like some, that's some, that's some power move shit. Cause like, a lot of us were really, in a lot, a lot of us and a lot of the rappers, they was just posting hashtags, 321 Savage, talking about situation. Nobody really took action like that. But Jay took action. Jay is actually one of, one of the few people who actually uh, supports and helps the, the younger act in hip hop. A lot of these people don't do that. They don't do that. They don't fuck with new acts and new sounds. They don't do that shit. Like, they don't want to get involved with them niggas. But he's actually one of the few who actually, you know, mixes and, you know, help them out, get them some pointers or whatever. So that's why I fuck with Jay. Did y'all see the video of uh, the fucking racist dude in the... I don't know where it was at, but in the video... <laughs> In the video, the man was in a fast food joint, uh, and he got into it with the cash with, with the cashier, and he called her a nigger. Call the cop! Get out! You fucking nigger! You fucking you a fucking you low life little nigger. bitch! Get out, bitch! Get out! You a little low life. Sir, I'll call the police on you. I didn't do anything wrong! See, I told myself that during Black History Month that I wasn't going to entertain any negativity towards our people, but goddamn, it has been more blatant and more like pushed to the forefront. It is pissing me off. Like, first of all, move, moving on. I'm on Twitter and I see a cover of a magazine, Esquire, and front and center is a young Caucasian male. And on the cover of the magazine, it says, growing up white, middle class, and male. In that context, the way that they put it, they made it seem like it was a struggle for him to grow up the way that he did. In all of my head, I'm like, okay, growing up white, class male equals privilege you need somebody on the cover who's going to talk about growing up black in poverty neighborhoods and fighting to not be a statistic but you know what shit like that they, they don't they don't necessarily pay attention to shit like that I just want to see some black excellence and speaking of black excellence Marseille Martin from all blackish she landed a deal with Universal. Pretty much, she's about to be producing content on Universal and getting that big bag. She's about to be getting that big bag. And, bro, like, I feel some type of way. Like, that, that, first of all, that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. And at 14, you making power moves like that, man, that's what's up. Meanwhile, I'm 18, I got student loans, I got bills, 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 and I'm trying to make it through college, and, huh. But still, I mean, I mean, whatever. We gotta start from somewhere. I'm just trying to secure this bag. Like, if you're watching this, like, all I'm saying is, I will be, I will love to make power moves too. Uh, I, I got a pen. I got a pen on me. Front that paper. Front the paper. That's it, man. I'm out here. Guess who's dating? Black China and fucking Soldier Boy. Like, ain't this about yo? It wasn't it, 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 whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever, man. Like, I just don't know how these celebs just be like everywhere with everybody. Like, I don't know what the f fuck that is. I don't know what the fuck that is. So, yeah, that was the seventh episode of Martin Talk. I hope y'all enjoyed today's episode. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, I will be back for episode eight. Damn, already. Yay! Hope y'all have a good week. And yeah, stay safe. Stay black. Stay whatever you are. Be blessed. Have a good one. And yeah, man, I'll see y'all later.